Grand Rising, my friends. It is another day. We're at the end of the week. End of the week in this month. Okay. No, everybody been having a good week. We've been getting there, learning, seeing the world grow, moving. It's been some bad times. If anybody's in the um, Louisiana or in the East Coast, you know, our hearts are with you. We're, we're please be safe. You're not, probably not watching this right now. Oh, you know, get somewhere and and do what you need to do. When you come back, we need to focus on rebuilding, and we need to probably be thinking of uh, the the country needs to be thinking about a better way of dealing with these. Used to be like once in a century. It's like once a year. It'd probably be soon once every couple months events. Uh, crypto market looking good. Bitcoin up to forty nine thousand three hundred fourteen. Ethereum was a little bit higher. Uh, had broke three thousand eight hundred. Slightly under now three thousand seven hundred ninety two dollars and eighty seven cents. Cardano had an all time high. Believe we'll be getting to that a little bit later. It's down a little bit now to two dollars and ninety-five cents. Binance Coin four dollars and eighty-two cents. Oh, sorry, sorry, not cents. Four dollars, four hundred eighty-two dollars. I'm thinking in my head like, oh, come on, man, you gotta let's put together the stock list, buddy. You out here tripping? My bad, y'all. My bad, y'all. We. But you know, we'll we'll figure out. You know, right now it's just me, so I'll just in terms of. Like, I guess what stocks I th- I'm interested in looking at and keeping track of, but there's no problem with that. XRP, dollar twenty five. Doge lost its little bit of gains debt back down. Hey, look, the fact that the market has been so stable at these levels is insane in terms of usually the fluctuations are much more <laughs> severe, dramatic and frequent. But, you know, maybe we matured a little bit in the markets. Nothing's too wrong with that. Now, one thing that hasn't been slowing down for a second has been Solana. Let's give up the clap for Solana. At almost 20% on the day, $132.49. Man. 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 <laughs> Anything else doing as well? Avalanche. Avalanche has been doing well for a while. Avalanche is up. Mostly today in the past week, though, $46.50. You've seen the DeFi coins. we got Ave at $401.16. Pancake Swap, $23.46. Pancake Swap, the one that's taking a hit over the week compared to the others. IOTA had a pretty good day, up almost a third to a dollar fifty-two. Just keeping an eye on things out here, seeing who's who's making money or not. Oh wow! So I know everybody doing well. It's the end of the week, prepared. We're going into the weekend here. Some people are going to have Labor Day off in the United States and be safe. You know, we still have, we're in the midst of a pandemic, and I don't even know what wave we had at this point. It's been an undulating wave, it seems like. <laughs> the uh, Just be safe, be smart, keep yourself um, in a good place so you can, um, you know, we got we got work to do. No time for the, no, no, no rest for the well-meaning. With that... We all about that positivity. You see, I got it popping yesterday and go keep that up, which is find someone in your life that has their soul has called out to you and 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 sought you out when you were at your lowest point and they brought you in and energized you, put that battery back in your back and sent you on your way. And now as you go through your day, you don't even don't even say look back and be like, thank you. You know, I may have said it once or twice, but you need to be saying thank you to this person on the Internet via this channel. Go ahead. Write something nice about them in the comment section. Share this video. Say, hey. For the rest of time, unless, you know, somebody, I didn't even go bring that energy towards you. Know, go talking about copyright, the strikes and stuff like it's going to be on there forever. And everybody will see what I wrote. But I can't wait for the weekend, everybody. 
I mean, I can't wait for every day. So what are you going to do? I had a great day today. You know what I mean? Um, see a lot of, what I do in my uh, day-to-day, I do see a lot of pain. Um, but a lot of it's self-inflicting people, and I tell them that. They, some people think you that that being the odd one out, it will get them more attention. And, you know, so sometimes people self-inflict their own misery, which, you know, you try to help them to see that it, 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 that's unnecessary. And it may be, we'll talk about this at some point, the programming patterns that people learn from an early age that don't, that, that self-sabotage them um, later in life or try to put obstacles up and away from them to become better people, you know. So we learn to recognize that and defeat those. Bitcoin is up, but the number three cryptocurrency hits new high. Already the world's third largest crypto Cardano ADA token hit a new high of $3.09 on Thursday, September 2nd, 2021, boosting its value to nearly $100 billion. So let me go back for a second. Where is it at? Cardano is at 94 so $3 is almost 100 So that means 10 times and up to 30 to $30, which would be close to Bitcoin's cap here at 50000 would be you know a trillion dollars, so that'd be about thirty. If we go see a thirty dollar Cardano, that's going to be the equivalent market cap to what Bitcoin is today, roughly. Um, so something to keep an eye on. But growing interest in non fungible tokens and smart contracts is fueling the comeback among some of the top digital currencies. A smart contract is a computer code stored on a blockchain that runs when predetermined conditions are met. It can automatically monitor, execute, and enforce a legal agreement. All participants can immediately can be immediately certain of the outcome without any intermediaries' involvement. So basically, and that's one of the words that I had to understand in, in crypto that it, it first felt weird, but once I understood it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's the best ever. It's trustless, meaning you don't have to trust the contract. It's going to do what, it's, what it was said to do. You don't have to worry about somebody... Um, waking up and, and changing their mind or uh, ha- having debt and, and debt being co- and, and they're using they're, they're going to steal this money to pay for that. Cryptocurrencies and these smart contracts are trustless. Once you have said it and, and agreed to the terms of agreement and you send your money to the address, the other party sends their, you know, whatever you guys are agreeing to on there. The, it's in code now. Now, you know. Of course, the code has to be written correctly, but that's like anything in life. So, an NFT is a unit of data stored on blockchain that certifies a digital asset like a photo. So, one of my one of my one of my peeps who listened to this, you know, said, "Hey, talk about CryptoPunks." So, CryptoPunks are NFTs, and what what you know, I'm not going to go too in depth in them now because. You know, we got other stuff to talk about, but the long and short of it is that some of the first NFTs were these things called CryptoPunks. They were digital. Uh, some people have made digital art, pixels of these characters, and there are thousands of them, right? This was about four or so years ago, and they just been getting traded back and forth over those four years. Now they're selling for, you know, we talked about Visa bought one. How much was it for? A couple hundred thousand? I don't think it was a couple million. I think it was a couple hundred thousand or so. But they sell it for hundreds of thousands. So, and there were thousands of them, like, you know, 7,000 or so. I don't know all the details. So, you know, and they're like, oh. so I just understand. They'd be thinking like, okay, NFTs are going to be huge. Are huge, are going to continue to be huge, even beyond what we're imagining now. So, you know, I was just thinking, um, you know, somebody who's creative and art, get them making some little digital art pieces, mint them to the blockchain, start the process of them sitting there. It'll be about time, quantity. It'll be about time and quantity. <laughs> you know? There also, I saw some articles, and we may talk about it at some point, how they're going to change the music industry because now the artists can definitely make sure they're getting paid via the blockchain off of their music as opposed to trusting these third party con uh, or, you know, directly these streaming services about uh, the validity of how many plays they got. 
you know. Cardano and why Cardano is pumping is because they are about to have a hard fork to the Alfonso fork, which is going to initiate its smart contracts, NFT, DeFi space. And it's like, I think, September 12th, sometime soon, a couple, couple days, a week or so away. I mean, a little bit more than a week away, but it's coming soon. And Cardano, I mean, we, we will see. We will see what, what will occur. Now, this is interesting, and, and, and this is what I talk about there. You know, I spoke about he has Moxie. Xiaoping Zhao, that's how you name Xiaoping Zhao? Uh, Binance CEO said that he thinks definitely that Bi Binance, also known as CZ, we go with CZ, our guy CZ here, founder and CEO of the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, has revealed that his U.S. platform plans to conduct an initial public offering within the next three years. Binance U.S. is just going to do what Coinbase did. Now, could he just be, of course, he's just talking big, but if you go back it up, that becomes, you know, a, a, a different story. Why Binance is mostly a global entity, various local regulatory restrictions prompted it to launch a strictly American arm in September 2019. And they still now being uh, under investigation, possibly going to be sanctioned until they pay the protection money to the individuals who just are doing their jobs to protect the investors. Consequently, Americans were ultimately barred from using Binance's global platform last November. Currently, Binance US is dot US is available in most but not all United States as the service is still out of reach for residents of several states, including Connecticut, Hawaii, Idaho, Louisiana, New York, Texas and Vermont. Texas to be about freedom. Show be controlling what everybody can say and do. <laughs> you know. You would imagine that they, uh, but they they definitely, it, there's a lot of grifters. It's a lot of grifting. Not that intelligent grifters as well, but, you know, so it'd it be, you know. It, it, <laughs> uh, so, something to keep an eye. By, uh, Coinbase did really well with its IPO. And also a lot of great people in the state of Texas. I think when I say the grifters, I think it's in the leadership. When you see the leadership, it's just not smart people who think they're um, getting over. And they're probably just trying to feed their pockets. And so bad decisions get made. But people, like most places in this world, like, like yeah, like most places, is just super awesome. You know, we'll see how that goes in the future. Uh, is the future travels and people move up and decide to take lead. Hopefully a lot of good people decide to take leadership um, positions in this world. I don't know why we don't. I don't know if I'm included in that, but I like to think some days. Social Security is getting a 6% increase for inflation. So what does that mean? And they say, why inflation's 6% cost of living increase? So a 6% cost of living increase for Social Security this year. Remember, we talked yesterday about inflation is usually 4% a year. So even when you're Social Security, they can't just say, all right, the same money we gave you this year is the same as, you know, 10 years ago. Because even government, yeah, I'm sure they did that for a long, so they can get away, as long as they can get away with it. But even the government knows that inflation occurs and you have to do something about it. This year, Social Security is getting a 6% increase. Why? Oh, 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 I wonder why. Oh, wait. Ah, this may be the one. I know that's the other one up in the future. Uh, one of these, the computer is a long story, but I'm not going to go into it. Uh, I'm about to read something from a, a different place as we go into it and, and blabber my mouth about it. So, consumer prices in July were up 5.4% year over year. Inflation, they, they think rising prices in 2021 are another factor. What else are they trying to say that um, the, the increase in Medicare Part B premium taxes uh, and uh, just rising prices? So that is really the cost of inflation is that 
you say, okay, when when I when I say your hundred dollars is is now ninety four dollars this year, or say if they just even did it just to match inflation, and they gave everybody six percent. When you go to buy things at the store, which you usually could have bought for $100 last year, you can only get 94 bucks because the price has gone up. And everybody's seeing that now. We, we've been seeing it now for over a year, a little bit more, quite honestly. Um, I think even a little bit before uh, the pandemic started where the boxes were looking a little bit smaller. The proportions were not the same as they were, but the prices were <laughs> the same as they were. So what do we do as people? We just allow it to occur. Or we, we figure out a way. We, now, you know, most people listening to this are trying to already probably a little bit ahead of the game or getting themselves ahead of the game to where this doesn't have to be a big part of your life unless you choose to make it so. But for me, I, you know, I don't... We'll talk about that probably um, tomorrow or the next day. But in terms of when most of the new technologies go online, the automation of a lot of what we think of only humans can do in this world, what is going to be the purpose? What, what are people going to do, you know, from a financial standpoint, from a just a we as human beings have drive if we don't have a purpose in a sense of getting things in, in, in structure the human um, organism does not function well <laughs> i see it far too often for individuals who don't who have no structure and are just flying by the seat of their pants and ending in all types of different situations that's not, you can definitely look at that and be like, oh, okay, no, that's, 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 that's pathology. That's not doing well. There's no argument with that. You can, oh, you know, you, everyone can be, can have as much freedom as they want. <laughs> and some people, their decisions and freedom, you can tell them cause them misery. Can you change that for them? No, nah, not unless they want to change for themselves. You can try, and, and America tries its might to legislate change in human be behavior. Let's see how well, you know, uh, see how that, well that worked out for us. Kind of speaking of which, new survey finds nobody has enough savings to survive retirement. Problem spans across every generation. Enjoying a well-earned retirement in your later years used to be the final chapter of the American dream. But the increasing number of Americans seem to be headed towards a living nightmare due to a lack of savings. A new survey confirms. Spoke with about a thousand Americans between the ages of 40 and 73 across the generation and simply did not have sufficient retirement. More than half of those surveyed had less than 50,000 in savings. That's kind of okay. Closer when you, you know, not even that okay when you're around 40 ish. But by 73, that's scary time, terrifying time. And that amount is unlikely to go up anytime soon for most of them. About 60% of workers are putting less than 10% of their income into retirement savings, while about a third aren't even setting aside 5%. This lack of savings is definitely not exclusive to older Americans. In fact, millennials, many of whom are pushing 40, wow, are even worse off than Gen X or boomers as they lag in retirement savings, home ownership, and overall wealth when compared to previous generations. It's not, and they say it's not due to bad planning. It's just that wages have not kept kept up with the price. The biggest issue is that wages simply have not kept up with the increased price of living. Inflation, you know, as we talked about inflation. People cannot save when they're putting all their money into survival. While wage gains have increased for the highest earners, the same cannot be saying for the average earner. And it goes back to what I was saying about John Nash, you know, the mathematician. If we just focus on the best, um, not even the best, strike that. If we just focus on the people making the most money, keep continue to do better than everybody else. The better earners continue to, I was thinking the best earners continue to can improve, but everyone else suffers. The system is not going to last. It is going to collapse in some way. 
whatever what way that may be could be a surprise to all of us. But it is silly to think that that is a stable platform to base your society on. What are we doing here, peoples? What's even scarier? <laughs> Despite these grim prospects for the for the financial future, a good amount of Americans still seem to be confident that they will be able to retire on the standard schedule, which is also a little depressing. Of those surveyed, 46 percent said they plan to leave the workforce at age 65 or earlier. So they're delusional and going to be set for disappointment. And what does that lead to? Depression, substance abuse alienation spiraling so this is you know hopefully we we have to think about what's going to be the the next how the information revolution is going to change the way we look at what we consider you know work careers the uh, earning a living in the United States Now we're going to make a bit of a shift and kind of talk about, I mean, similar along the same lines, because, you know, most of what we do here kind of all bleeds together in some way or another. But housing market has been going crazy, right? If you've been trying to look to sell a house, it was it was gangbusters looking to buy a house. It's like you got to uh, uh, be willing to sign over your firstborn at, at the minimum. You know, with the and, and they may not want him. They just may want to his his or hers or theirs future earnings. Just whatever your firstborn make all throughout their life that comes to us for this for this uh, two bedroom, one bath, <laughs> seven hundred square foot home. <laughs> the uh, the the market is crazy. U S U S. Housing market dynamics are slowing and shifting to buyer's advantage. And that's good. You know, they're seeing now that the market is showing signs of normalizing in August with more homes coming on the market and price growth slowing. New listings ticked up 4.3 percent year over year in August, although inventory was down 25.8 percent compared to this time last year. But in July, that was at 33.5 percent. So starting to improve somewhat. The inventory is still way down compared to even just last year. Still looking for year over year price increases. So sellers also began adjusting listing prices to better compete with an uptick in inventory. Where did it say it used to be like? Uh, here it is. But now a home well price well and in good condition may see two or three bids compared to 10 last year. For sellers not seeing as many offers, it may be worth revisiting pricing strategies as buyers continue searching for homes that fit their budgets. So the market is starting to slow down. You know, we talked a little bit about the moratorium, either when that was going to just be appropriately um retired or it seems like now being you know not sure where we had in the court case where a judge struck it down are they appealing that and gonna go back you see where the supreme court now no telling where uh decisions are coming back in this country so I mean, dred scott brown versus board of education who who knows um i laugh to to keep from panicking I'm not, I'm not a panicker, but from just, you know, getting angry, frustrated, not knowing, you know, knowing, being, feeling powerless. But, you know, my faith in how things turn out is in a different place as is. So I don't really ever feel those emotions. I can see them and be like, oh, that must be, you know, I can, I can have compassion and empathy and understand how others can feel that but i try to say no we look we, i mean i know but i understand that you feel this way now but there's another way to see how every situation is and when you have to me and i can say whatever i want to kill us when anybody say when you have god so deep in your heart and soul in your life and and, and that and you see through that lens of of that timelessness you know a lot of things that you you get so upset and anger and bent out of shape, you like nah, 
it's not that's not that serious you know it's not it's not attacking my soul <laughs> um so but moratorium coming out uh being uh some of the 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 we saw the lumber prices coming down the prices for goods the supply lines picking up you know these things in the next probably going to be in the span of a couple of years quite honestly are going to start to see a, a, a normalization of prices and speaking of which hold on what to expect in the 2022 housing market and for here just was saying, uh, indeed, prices have skyrocketed, have been skyrocketing. Competition has been higher than ever, and the low supply of homes ensure that many home buyers were and still are paying top dollar, all while the mortgage rate sat near rock bottom. Uh, while the housing market is still hot, there are signs that's beginning to cool off with housing inventory. We talked about this number of homes starting to meanfully recover, blah, blah, blah. More homes mean more options. We talked about that. This is going to, you're going to see it's going to say this down here, but now I have it somewhere else where it can tell me. So what are we, they're expecting for uh, 2022? Do expect more choices on the market, bigger inventory. We already talked about that. What else? Do not expect prices to drop. Unfortunately, would be home buyers, you'll likely still be paying top dollars for a home next year. For home prices, we still have really strong growth, really high numbers, and things are still going up. But they're just starting to slow down a little bit in that progression up. So the key experts are hitting home, though, that prices will be rising at a slower pace than we saw this year. And remember, prices are going nutty this year, so it's not necessarily going to be that much better. What else can we expect? A more normal offer process. At this point, most prospective homeowners have likely heard the anecdotes of buyers shelling out far above asking price for a home, feverishly trying out bid multiple other offers, or even foregoing some inspections to secure a property. Those things are going to kind of slow down a little bit We've going into 2022. So it's probably going to be more of a buyer's market, a little bit more so than it has been, at least for the past uh, year and a half, two years, close to a year and a half, where... You know, when the pandemic hit, people were trying to find places that were, you know, they didn't have to be where they were. So it opened up the playing field up. It became like, oh, I can you can you can move. Uh, you What is it? We now you can move around the country You can do whatever you want to do. Don't expect mortgage rates to remain at their lows. So that's going to change things, too. One of the big reasons why there have been so many purchases in the market is that the the rate interest rates have been so low so individuals have been able to borrow money at much lower rates and so of course you're like hey let me try so a lot of people are trying do expect the suburbs to remain hot i think so especially as long as remote life i don't know what we're calling it we're going to talk about the metaverse too i don't know i mean people are up on the metaverse and not from ready player one but the real one they're trying to build don't expect buying a house to become more affordable. That's just repeating itself about prices not coming down. So the housing market, and so when we think of it like, well, what does this mean for us? You know, well, if you're thinking of investing in real estate, this may not be the best time to buy. Maybe wait a little bit. Maybe put your money, look at the, the, the rent market and say, okay, now you're seeing that the moratorium is out. What is that going to look like for um, these real estate investment trusts that have a lot of more rental properties in their portfolio versus ones that have commercial business. Make your decisions for yourself for what you want to do so you can think about how that's going to impact these real estate investment trusts, the, re the REITs, REITs, the meets, the REITs. And if you say I want physical properties, you may say, I may want to wait a little bit if it can stack up a little bit more money. You may have to pay more in terms of a loan that you may take out, but you may have more of a down payment if you're just a little bit more patient and may get better deals because there may be a lot more inventory that comes uh, your way. And, in, in, you know, not necessarily in the next three or four months, but six, seven, nine, eight months down the line. Um. You know, real estate, you, you 
people make a, get rich, really really rich from real estate. So, you know, one of the diversifications, if you as long as you use, you know, say you start making money at at your job, then diversify that money into stocks and cryptos, real estate, art. These are, you know, these are smart decisions. Or if you make a bunch of money in crypto, then just say, all right, don't just leave it there. Take out and say, all right, let me start thinking, how can I, as we were talking about yesterday, one of those um, ETFs uh, strategy funds where you're getting paid, you know, you put, you know, your money in there a, a fair amount, you know, say you made, oh, I made 50000 in crypto. Wow. It was, I, I hit the lotto, basically. You know, I got lucky. Well, then, look, you know, maybe you want to spend some of that money, you know, take some of the money out, but half of it, 20, 30 of it, you may want to start to put in one of these strategies and building up to where you're getting those dividends and then just compounding on itself in the future where, yeah, you have, you know, a half a million, 750,000, you know, from, like I said, the future. But then you can start to get paid out, you know, $1,500, $2,000 a month that you just you know, not reinvest and said, all right, hey, look, I'm I'm good. That, that money can just come to me as dividends. But for now, especially if you're younger, you just, you reinvest it and let the compound interest grow to that point. That's how you go faster. But I'm not going to keep you guys long. I love you. You love yourself. God loves us. And that is all that matters.